In this video, I'm going to be breaking down one of the best blitz beaters and cover two beaters in Madden 23. Now, we're in Madden 22. The beta just ended. But what I thought I would do is just give you guys some very basic things that are still going to work well in Madden 23 that you can start adding to your offense or doubling down on your offense right now in Madden 22. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody. We do videos like this every single day to help people become better Madden players. So if you're looking to get better, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, I'm going to be talking today about the shotgun bunch formation in the Washington football team's playbook or the Washington commander's playbook, that is. And if you want to get my full gun bunch offensive ebook, there's going to be a link in the description where you can join my Patreon for just 10 bucks. You'll get my entire gun bunch offensive ebook. And we're actually going to be updating it for Madden 23 so that you can start day one with a great scheme that is going to be very effective. Now, I just wanted to talk today with you about the play verticals and how I would recommend running verticals in Madden 22. I've got a couple different variations of setups. We're going to show you my favorite one specifically for the cover two blitz meta that I think a lot of people are going to be dealing with in Madden 23. So we're just going to come out in the play verticals here and on defense, I am going to come out in the play DB fire to press. And then I'm just going to uh, just set a cover three as an audible just so that I can have all of the coverages at my disposal. So one of the things that you need to understand about Gun Bunch, especially in Madden 23, is just like any year, the hash marks are very, very important. Understanding how the routes work. And verticals, in my personal opinion, is actually one of the best plays in Madden 23 on either hash mark. But what makes Madden 20, um, what makes Madden 23 so interesting is how when you run this to the short side, it actually can be a very good play. And I'm going to show you why. So what you'll see right here is I have a vertical hook on the field. If I shade my coverage down and I have a hard flat on the outside and I have a vertical hooks, you would think that these zones would play tight end wheels really well. All I'm going to do is I'm going to motion out my bunch receiver. We're not going to worry too much about the left side, but I just want to show you this interaction on the right side of the screen. And because my tight end is coming outside a lot more, you'll see there there's a nice little alley and I can throw that ball to my tight end. Now I wanna show you what happens if I'm on the other hash where my bunch is to the wide side of the field. So again, the two main things are wide side setups versus short side setups. And if you know anything about Madden, you know that Madden's zone system is based on a grid. What that means is that this vertical hook has a grid at which it's supposed to cover. Uh, in my personal opinion, that grid is going to service essentially from the hash mark to the numbers is the primary area that that's going to cover. And then the zones, the flat zones, are going to basically be covering primarily outside of the numbers. So what you'll see is where this wheel route breaks whenever I'm on the wide side of the field, this wheel route to the tight end, it will break inside the numbers, meaning that a vertical hook should be able to play that and have inside position, as you see it does in this example so therefore what i like to tell people when running the play verticals especially in madden 23 i think it makes a lot of sense to primarily use this play as a short side setup now i want to give a shout out to one of my favorite madden players to study and that is spamming buttons one of the things that he did that i thought was really interesting and took a lot of com the competitive community by storm is whenever he was becoming um, one of an up and coming competitive Madden players, he would run his trips tight end to the short side or the wide side of the field. And essentially he would always keep his trips tight end formation with his trips set to the left side. A lot of trips tight end players like Fancy and J Wall, popular trips tight end players, would often flip their trips to either side. This is similar to an actual real NFL concept where uh, Hall of Fame wide receiver Raymond Berry would actually talk about the importance of the Colts teams when he was with Johnny Unitas, how they wouldn't switch routes. They wouldn't switch their receivers to other sides of the field. They would rather leave their receivers on the same side of the field. And this is something that the Indianapolis Colts eventually emulated in their early 2000s. It's another concept that the air raid offense is famous for doing. They don't flip their sets. They keep the receivers where the receivers are and they learn setups that work on the right hash mark or on the left hash mark. 
which is exactly what Spam and Buttons did with his trips tight end, making him, in my opinion, one of the best trips tight end players in the game today. And you can apply this same concept to the gun bunch. In fact, Henry and Wesley uh, from 818, they did that this last Madden season as well, applying short side and wide side concepts. It's also uh, something that Skimbo uh, did as well this year in his gun bunch offense. He applied wide side and short side concepts. And so my point in saying that is just to say that you don't have to you don't have to shift your trips to the wide side of the field all the time. You can put your trips into the boundary. And so I think what that gives us with this wheel route to the tight end is this little trick here that I'm showing you in this video where I can throw this wheel route because he's going to cut outside of the yellow zone. As you can see, the yellow zone is just a little bit to the inside but again i know madden is based off of a grid and because i know that it allows me to be very effective with this concept let me show you now this is a shaded down vertical hook in a cloud flat and what you'll see here see how i can just throw it right in that alley every single time now i want to bring this home by bringing this back over to the wide side of the field and showing us a what I would believe to be the reason as to why the running back wheel route is so hard to defend in this year's game. Obviously, aside, let's set aside for the fact that you, can, um, you can't man up the running back wheel route. But the other reason as to why it's so hard is if you're running with your bunch to the wide side of the field, well, if I put my running back here on the left side on a wheel, remember now he is going to be breaking where at? Outside of those numbers. And so even if I have a vertical hook from uh, buntling here the slot corner and I have a flat zone it's going to kind of create a perfect crease for me to throw this as you can see right here that is what makes these wheel routes so good one of the many reasons the the man stuff's a little bit different in Madden 23 but the zone stuff is really still by and large the same so that being said, I recommend running this to the short side of the field. Now, it's not just the snap read, and I want to show you one other thing with this wheel route. I really do think I want I really do think it's important to understand exactly how this works. So even if I have the yellow zone from the slot corner, again, the tight end is going outside. So you see how that yellow zone sucks in, and I can throw that right in that little seam. That's what makes bunch vertical so so good, even in Madden 23. So what they're gonna have to do to guard this is they're going to have to man up the tight end. So let's say that they do something like this and they man up the tight end and then they're going to use her over in this area. Well, now their user is going to, we're going to put their user in conflict, if you will. And the best way that I know how to put the user into conflict is just by simply putting the running back on either an out route, a wheel route, or a streak. The streak is probably my personal favorite because it really does put them in a difficult position. The wheel route is also still really good. In Madden 23, I actually think it's a better wheel route um, for what we needed to accomplish in this setup. But what you'll see is now there's no yellow zone to defend the wheel route, so the wheel is going to take that away. But now I want to show you another example. Let's say that they try to defend the running back wheel. So they want to stop the running back wheel. So what they're going to do is they're going to man this guy up on the tight end and now they're going to go user just to simulate it, i'm going to man him up the running back wheel route well now the whole middle of the field is wide open for chris godwin to be able to work the middle of the field a little snap throw right into the seam so this is what makes verticals one of the many reasons that it's such a good concept so now what they have to do if they really want to shut down the wheel route is they're going to need to man up the tight end they're going to need to have an, a zone over here. And then on the left side, they're going to need to have something because they're going to have to use of that crosser. So just to illustrate real simply, we're just going to man this guy up on the running back wheel and just say it's going to take it away. So they do something like this. This is where this play really can break down a cover two, though. What you'll see on the right side is if I have time in the pocket, I can step up and pass lead this outside. And as you can see, that's going to be a nice little consistent way to manipulate a cover two coverage. Now, this is still fairly consistent in Madden 23. This wheel route, by and large, is one of the best routes in the game for being able to beat all of these zones. The biggest difference, in my opinion, is the fact that when you man up a wheel, especially if you have inside leverage, it's a little bit harder to make the throw. 
well, these man ups are fine, and so therefore it's going to take away my my wheel route. But now you see, essentially, I have to play a whole different defense from what I want to play, and I also can't just I can't just um, you know I can't blitz. I mean, I really can't blitz from this look. Last but not least, I want to show you something with this. Um, if they start to man up the running back, that's where I like to put him on an out. You'll see with this out route now, he's going to break to the flat and get me an easy 10 to 15 yards. And the last thing with this play is with zone drops, whenever you run a crosser from the short side of the field, and it's not always true, but it's in, in the bunch example that we're showing you right now, it is certainly true that this crossing route to Godwin is going to run and get over the top of a 30 yard cloud. As you can see, it runs super deep. This concept is still there for you in Madden 23. What's even better though, is you can highball this right in the seam right there. And as you can see, it can get right in front. So now they have to change what they're going to do. And really what they basically have to do, in my opinion, is they have to be running a man to man scheme something like this to try to stop this which is why we want to have the out route in case they are in man that way i can hit my running back or if i get this wheel over the top as you can see in this example guys this is a very simple way to look at bunch verticals one of the best plays in madden it's really one of my favorite passing concepts there's a lot of setups that you can do but in my personal opinion the play works best if you flat um, or out the running back or if you wheel the running back. To me, those are the two best setups in the game for this right here. And another thing here is, last but not least, is we do have, let's say that they hard flat. We do have this fade on the left. Now, unfortunately, this fade is a little bit too far inside. But I will say, if they give it to you, you can try to sneak that in there right there. Okay, and that's gonna take a good pass lead. So I'd say work on that, but that is just a little bit of a layer at which I wanted to leave you with in this video because really we're going to, they're not going to be able to play cover two against bunch and cover two is definitely going to be the meta in Madden 23, at least as it stands right now. So by the ability to be able to beat cover two in a variety of different ways and also the ability to beat pressure with five receivers out on a route because we're going to attack the whole field is one of the many reasons as to why Bunch, I think, is going to be one of the best offenses yet again in Madden 22. And if you enjoyed the video and you want to learn more about the Gun Bunch offense, be sure to join my Patreon. For just $10, you're going to get my full Gun Bunch Madden 23 ebook. These are concepts that I discovered in the beta, and then we're going to be updating our Bunch ebook with that. But the other cool part about the membership is you might say, well, what if the game changes when the game comes out? Well, all of our eBooks are always updating as things change in the game, as the meta changes, as, as um, patches happen, as tuning happens, as route running changes, all those things, we take all that into account and all of our eBooks are consistently updated as changes occur. So if you wanna check out the Bunch eBook today, you can lear start learning the principles in Madden 23 or Madden 22 today that will work in Madden 23 and then when the game comes out you can also expect a free update to the entire ebook thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time if you want to join the membership the link is down below